All right, here we go, boys. Doing a shout out. I watched Asmund Gold's video where he mentioned that his company was publishing this game called Claws and Chaos. I dabbled with it, had a couple things he asked for feedback on the game. I figured, hey, might as well help out a fellow content creator, one that's obviously much bigger than myself. He brought up this game. Auto chess battlers aren't exactly my cup of tea, not my favorite style of game, but I do enjoy them. I've got quite a bit of experience with them. My first bit of advice on this that actually might help his company <laughs> is when you first fire up this game, the background music is in insanely loud. It blows your eardrums out. They need to adjust this. I have the settings currently this low just because even this is just blows my ears out. You can't hear a darn thing. Their sound mixing is horrible. Reminds me of a mobile style game or something. Dabbling through the campaign. I've beaten the campaign without fail, fairly simply. He already knows that the game is not very hard or balanced to be very hard. Obviously, there's going to be a lot more of this, but there are a couple critiques just based off how the game is set up that I wanted to kind of offer. Hopefully, it helps. When you look through the shop, this stuff is pretty typical for games where you can, you know, either mobile games or similar things. I definitely did not purchase that. Where did I get that? The heck? I get, oh, you get this from, okay. So sometimes after doing a couple missions, you get whatever the heck these are, A coins, which should say A corns, I guess, but maybe they intended for that to be A coins, looking like A corns. Not sure if they're trying to be cute there or if they just typoed. But when you get a couple of these, you open it and a little fox comes running out and gives you some reward. I mean, I guess that's important. Yeah. These two missions, you get little acorns, I guess, through here. When you're in the shop, this might be something they develop much later, but I don't really see any benefit to unlocking any of this stuff because it's such a goofy, cutesy art style that somebody like myself, at least, really won't appreciate unlocking profit outfit for an archbishop. Like, I wouldn't even notice the difference, to be honest. When you're looking through the heroes, there's another thing you're supposed to unlock with. I think it's these books. When you click on them, you have yet to unlock this character's lore. In order to unlock the lore, you have to upgrade them to level one during battle. So if you use a character a lot, you can unlock their stories. Let me find one that I did it for. This one. So the issue is rabbit middle schooler is like any rabbit her age. She likes hanging out with her friends, online shopping, crafting detailed military strategies for hypothetical war. She's a star member of the junior military club and relishes in maintaining discipline and order in the halls of the academy. That's that's a cute little addition where they add like a story to each character. But some of them, like this one, the rabbit necromancer, unlike many others that attempt necromancy to see their deceased loved ones, rabbit necromancer is simply a mega fan of a long dead boy band and hopes to get her favorite favorite album of theirs autograph. Where does this come from? There's nothing for the player to really appreciate here because there's no storyline behind the necromancer. There's no background. There's no, the, you're not tied to any of the characters. These are just random characters that sometimes I've never seen this character ever in all three campaign playthroughs. I've never seen this character. I've never seen this character. There's a lot of characters that you're attempting to tie in like enjoyment of their stories, their cutesy little stories. But a lot of the stories aren't like a member of the local assassins club, cat assassin along with her partner as an accomplished hitman with a record-breaking number of completed missions. Very generic. This is a non-renewable, well, I guess it's renewable in a way, but this is a resource that you spend to unlock things that, frankly, you just don't care about. This stuff in a auto chess battler, the whole point of most auto chess battlers, at least in my experience that I've seen, is that you already know the characters and now you have a different way of putting them into something. For example, League of Legends did this. I forget what the chess battler for League is called, but League of Legends, everybody is already intimately familiar with their characters, so it's fun for them to really enjoy seeing their characters in a different style, a different format. And then when the characters change from one version of League to the other version, oh, Teamfight Tactics, that's what it's called. When they switch from League to Teamfight Tactics, it's interesting to see how it's completely different gameplay. Sometimes they interact completely differently from one to the other, but it's neat seeing them work because you already know their background and their stuff. This one, none of these characters are coming from anywhere. They didn't make, for example, the archery chipmunk or rabbit or whatever this thing is close enough to say Robin Hood to make it so you feel that. It's just a generic chibi anime looking character. So that's just something they may have put a lot more effort into something that really didn't pay off. At least that's how it feels. And when you're playing through the campaign, let me show you a few downsides that I saw of the campaign, but we'll do the third one. Here's the story, blah, 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 blah. The issue here is this has just dictated what you're playing. You essentially have character choices down here and you can click on them to see what they do, which I like that. That's nice. But there are a couple issues with the gameplay that really should be changed for ease of use. And let me show you one. Let's say I get a wolf and I'm like, ooh, I want to look over here at my synergies and see what synergies dogs get. Where the hell are dogs? Oh, there we go. Damage resist 15% per level. Okay, that's nice that it shows. The issue is if this guy has characters over here and you click this, it will bring up the character stats over the top of your team bonuses. So once the battlefield gets big enough, you can't actually see your team bonuses. The other issue is, let's say I invest heavily in this guy. Let's see if, how much I can... <laughs> 
invest in this guy, see if I can find another dog just to level him up. Yep, there we go. Okay, we have fully heavily invested in this guy, right? We're doing everything we can to level up. Okay, we're out of points. We've fully invested into this guy. See this, see how over here you can click equips to see what items you've put on him? It's not very obvious that you're deleting. If you get an equip, let's say you find a dagger down here and you put it on, it's not very obvious that your dagger is going to be replaced. I saw Asmund Golden, his own playthrough, in fact, consume over four foods and just keep throwing food on that character and he was deleting them without realizing he was. Another thing that's very frustrating, this is probably the worst of them all. If you have a character that you've invested in and you want to click equips but you accidentally click on sell, watch what happens. There's no confirm, there's no yes, there's no make sure you would like to do this, nothing. It just deletes, and I've had that happen during the campaign. It just deletes your characters and you're doomed. So let's put two little archers in here, which is an advantage early having, I've essentially doubled his DPS, right? Because I've made two of them. Let's get through this so I can show you the issue with the food on the next round. Cool, we won, obviously. Let's try to find us, oh wait, maybe upgrade the shop to get some food. First tomb, sure, food. I'm going to keep just adding food onto this poor guy. Now see, see how he has an equipped book? If I put this gun on the book, it will replace the book, but it won't ask you to confirm or anything. So I'll save that one so I can show it next, and then we'll see if we can save anything now. We'll probably lose this one now because I haven't upgraded anybody, but we'll see. Oh, there we go, look at that, pulling it out. So now that we have a second book or a second equip, you can hold this and it'll say equip. That's the only tip you get that it's going to fulfill the equip slot rather than the consumed slot. Obviously, food goes down here. It, I mean, I have common sense. I understood it because I saw food goes down here, items go up here. But to the average game player, I'm telling you the average, if you want this to be wide ranging, obviously you can't cater to just hardcore gamers, that sort of thing. So if you drag this up here, it just replaced that item and didn't give me a notification. Hey, are you sure you want to place this that's just something that most people appreciate same thing with this what if i go oh I, I gave him high crit so i definitely want to protect his health right give him a shield too well now i don't have a shield you see what i'm saying so you need to put it on somebody different all right can't put that out there all right now let's see what happens so now we have one equip on this guy we have one equip and one fruit on this guy let's combine like this and see what happens see we got we had a glock and a shield and a fruit the fruit vanished the glock wasn't selected the shield was selected players could get upset about this sort of thing happening to their characters because if you're doing an early game strategy where you're splitting your characters to effectively double their dps you just screwed yourself and it becomes one of those things where it's like if if it's not automatically intuitive players will not like it i'm telling you right now they just won't because they'll keep throwing all these buffs on like asmund gold did on his stream where he showed this game he did the exact same thing where his little assassin he kept putting different items on and those items just vanished and he had no idea he had zero idea that he was killing now we'll die real quick here and get to another round so i can show you a little bit more that's the majority of my critiques on this stuff. I mean, the auto battler is sort of straightforward. There's not really much. One thing that's an issue is if it says equip on one of these guys, that means they got an item. There's no way to check what item they were given. So you, it actually takes away a lot of the strategy. In an auto chess battler, in my opinion, you need to show, oh, here's more food. Let's go, more food, yay. You need to actually show everything that's happening. So, so then people can strategize. I liked it how if you put somebody here, it showed, hey, I'm going to attack that guy because I can reach him. But back here, it doesn't show who you would theoretically target. It should still at least show the direction they're looking. This is a nice touch the issue becomes later in later levels it will say equip 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 level two level one etc and if you don't actually have the ability to see the equips you will essentially lose a part of the strategic element of the game that you can't replace it can't come back you really need the ability to have that because if you don't have the ability to show or to evaluate and strategize against part of the game then you're going to have an issue where you lose part of the strategy element of the game, and in a game that is literally designed around its entire setup of strategy elements, you're losing a good chunk of what this game is about. And so that becomes a bit of an issue. So otherwise, the game's fairly easy to play, as long as you know the rules of just always upgrade these two things. It's almost never beneficial to not upgrade them first and just spam the battlefield with as many people as you can, because the more numbers, the better, right? It's... that's fairly true of most auto chess battlers. Obviously, I kind of screwed myself here by just not playing optimally, but 
you can win with just numbers. That's what I sh showed in the first round. I don't think Gold was looking for feedback on how good the game was in terms of balance. I think he knows it's not balanced. The issue becomes the clunkiness of the thing. To summarize, if they changed the fact that, look at this. Oh, let's say I'm clicking around, I'm clicking around, I'm trying to be fast, which everybody that plays an auto chess battler wants to be fast, right? Faster options, faster looks, faster, etc. And usually in multiplayer PvP, they speed the game up. You only have a certain amount of time to do everything. If I'm quick and I have like a level two archer here and I'm depending on him as my main guy and I go to equip and I click sell, I just lost everything and I got two bucks back. That's in no way, shape or form close to make this game decent. The other feedback is obviously when you put an equip on and it's going to replace something, they need to confirm that. They need to confirm that you want to replace that something. I don't want to be grabbing lifesteal, have this guy have a lifesteal thing already. Look at this. Groomer already has lifesteal, can't do it. See, that's beneficial. That's a beneficial side effect. Why does it not have it on the flip side where he is asked before replacing the lifesteal with something else, right? Like, why is that not a basic functionality of this? That's most of the feedback, brother. I know you're not too serious about this game and you're just publishing it, but I figured, hey, one creator to another, hope it helps out. Let me know if there's anything else I can do for you. See you guys later.